<laughs> What's up, guys? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. Um, today, we're going to be continuing on with uh, the Valheim speedrun grind. We're going to be doing new game random C glitchless all bosses. So let's just jump into it right away. This is where we try and defeat all the bosses as fast as possible. With a brand new character on a new random seed. I got like hiccuped in the first few seconds of the stream there because I just opened a fresh can of pop. <laughs> It was so cold, made me hiccup. Um, yeah, so this is going to be my last stream of the year. Um, so I hope everyone has a great Christmas and a happy new year. I'm going to be taking a few days off for Christmas after today. So uh, I'll be back on the grind with videos and streams sometime in the middle of next week mid mid to late next week hopefully you can get that miss on only challenge video done for around the time of new year what's up connor thanks for stopping by the stream hope you're doing good bud thank you merry christmas All right, so I'm typing in the print siege chat command. And I'm also copying it onto my clip bar. The interesting detail is this screen here hides the chat box. But you can actually still use the chat box during the screen. Morning, Lancelot. Thanks for stopping by. And thanks for the look. I appreciate it, bud. Merry Christmas. It is going to be the last stream of the year. I'm going to take a few days off for Christmas after tonight. So we've got Forest Crips showing up. Which that's uh, what burial chambers are called. So we can skip this intro. But, oh shit, I don't actually have my splits open. Um, but the timer doesn't officially start until we start moving. So we can actually use this journey to scout a little bit. And honestly, you know, 90% of the time, we don't get useful information from these. However, if we do see a nice big mountain earlier, it can be a real big deal. So that's the main reason why we watch that start bit to see if we see a mountain. What's up, Roy? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good, bud. And thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. Pretty close to the here. Trying to listen out a little bit for deer.
Got some ball, which is nice. something on a PC whilst I remember. Yeah. Alright, I just heard a deer. There he is. Trophy, please. Nice. Have I considered doing a survival series? Yeah. I've considered it. We'll see what happens with uh, the Ashlands update. I'm thinking about doing it then. I'm not sure yet. What's up, Scraptastic? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good, bud. I am good, thank you. So I deconstruct this to the what? Okay, what did we get out of that chest? Nothing that good. Well, I heard a deer again. Morning, thanks for call. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. Happy holidays, Corvus. Thanks for the look. I appreciate it, dude. I hear this deer. Oh, there, there it is. He is so chill. We don't even need to trap him. Trophy, please. Not quite. Nice, Seismical. What's up, Dynamics? Next stuff in my hope you're doing good. I am well. I'm actually feeling great today, guys. So. I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for asking, bud. Merry Christmas. What's up, Rainer? Thanks for looking by the stream. I hope you're doing good. Okay, we hear another deer. Here he is. Oh, he spotted us so soon. Trophy, please. Ah, oh, damn, we're getting unlucky with these. Not hearing any more deer now. gonna head in the general direction the boss what 
What's up, Maverick? That was something I hope you're doing good, dude. What's up? Hey, no, that was my stream. Hope you're doing good. This is a terrible spot to have to try and get these deer. I just let them get up here. <laughs> Trophy, please. Ah, getting unlucky with these trophy drop rates. Thanks so look, Neil. Merry Christmas. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. Hell yeah, Sea Wage. <laughs> What's up, dude? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. Nice to see the new emo in action. This is a terrible spot to have to do this. And he ran back to us, what a legend. Trophy, please. What's up, Kraken? Next stuff and buy. Hope you're doing good, mate. Alright, we got it. Thanks so look, bud. Thanks, Seema. I'm glad you enjoy the videos, bud. Appreciate that. Thanks still a lot. Hope you're doing good, bud. Okay. Ooh, it looks like a good spawn spot. Hopefully it stays that way. Oh, why is he all, always going to a crappy spot nowadays? He's going to run away as soon as we get around here. So we got a lot of fires down there because we got so many mats. Nice. That was a good time. A little bit of a scuffed RNG with the Eat their spawn there. You keep spawning like inside a rock instead of out in the open, which is what we ideally want. But that was still very good. Oh, hell yeah. Congratulations, Kraken. Bit. 
Azarani, thanks for talking about the stream. I hope you're doing good, bud. My day's going great. Thanks for asking. Okay. Let's head over this way. Probably going to do some cooking as well. Doing pretty good, mat wise. Not that much leather. We need a lot more flint. Doing good hide wise. We only rested there because there's nothing else to do really but cook. So we might as well multitask. We we'll have to get some bone from this rock here. do have black forest here which is great but we also want flint which is why I'm not heading direct here we go We don't really have the extra leather to, um... Ooh. We just found a bunch of ball, though. Maybe... Hold off on that. That coal there. What's up, Petrusco? Thanks for coming the stream. I hope you're doing good. Thanks for the luck. Seven. Mm. So gonna hold off. Yeah, we're playing random seed.
That's usually what I run. Okay. Um, when you're looking for world, when you're running for world record, do you have a specific amount of materials? You know what you need or want, or are you collecting anything unnecessary? Um, we're collecting very little things that are unnecessary, and if we are, it's um. Only because, you know, it's, um, we just collected it along with, so at the same time as something that we needed. That was essential, if that makes sense. Like, if it's in the same loot pile. Um, but for the most part, we're collecting almost exactly what we need. However, it is rarely a fixed amount of mats because obviously the game is different every time this isn't like Zelda or something so you sort of uh, there there is quite a bit of improvisation as to what you get and when. Um, and then, like, there's a few things that, you know, it's just like you, you're definitely getting, if that makes sense. But you do also oftentimes wind up collecting things that, like, may or may not come in handy later. Like, for example, like resin. We only need six for a boat. But, um, you know. Oh, there's a barrel chamber here. That's cool. But yeah, we might end up making uh, fire arrows for modder, depending on how many feathers we find. So we we'll, won't really drop that. And obviously, we're sort of collecting it passively anyway. Variance is what makes the decision making intriguing about this run. I almost, I watched almost zero other speedrunning because of the non transformativeness. Yes. Yeah, I get that. It makes sense. There are some good speedruns out there that offer um, some variation. Ooh. Ooh, okay. That is a bit of a interesting one. a little bit far away. Been watching Jack and Dax's speed runs? Nice. That's fun. So 
bad. We can just loot like a little bit more. We might be able to make this our last burial chamber. Pretty good. There's a troll nearby. I wonder if that must mean that it's a troll cave. Somewhere pretty close. There it is. And this should get us some more bones. Right, what I'm gonna do real quick, chat, is just drop my rocks here just so I don't get over encumbered loot in these chests very nice Alright, so we have the bones we need, but we do need four more leather. Um, with the distance of this elder, kind of want to explore a little bit more here before we leave. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. It's an ancient seed there. I think there's one on the left I just heard, I think. As well, maybe. Because, uh, you know, if we just sort of wait until we're on the actual island where the Elder is, before finding the Ancient Seeds, we might just wind up that the, the Elder is actually on the coastline. And therefore, we end up sort of backtracking unnecessarily. Guess it was just the one ancient seed that I heard. Oh, there's one. This is going to be the uh, last stream of the year by the way so i hope everyone has a good christmas and a happy new year okay just need one more we may be Is that another troll cave over there? I think it is. It is. We definitely searched that for leather. Oh, there's another ancient seed there too. Oh, we can potentially get some fine wood from this mansion also. Interesting area. Oh, there's no table or still in there, never mind. a little bit unlucky 
Foggy. Thank you, Hano, for the 15 bitties, your legend. Appreciate those humble bitties. Thanks for the luck, bud. Okay. Burial chamber there, but can't get anything useful out of that now. So many mobs, I think it's not worth putting a bed here. Leather is what we're looking for in these chests. And we got no chests. Wow, that's unlucky. All right, let's get out of here. Let's head to that island with the elder. Thanks for the poison, bud. Love that. Now the cave was actually just empty. It's actually super unlucky. No, no troll, no, uh, no chests. At what point it runs, you usually reset. I mean, usually I reset when we're way off pace. Or the RNG is just terrible. I mean, I have done streams where I do no resets, but usually no reset runs in this game mean doing a run that's going to take days to finish. You do just to get an actual good run, you do just have to reset. This is really good for us, by the way. Leather. We need two more leather after this. It's really the location of bosses and finding the boss runes and the rune location. That is like the biggest RNG factor that you end up having to reset for in order to get a decent time. Other than that, there are certain scenarios where there can be mistakes or, or just like fluke accidents that send you back to the middle. Like sometimes an enemy can just destroy your bed and sometimes it can be out of like bad luck or carelessness perhaps. And when that happens and then you end up dying, I mean, you know, there, there's lots of scenarios in, in the run where you need to die, really, to do it faster. So, like, sometimes you have to rely on beds. And, uh, you know, you might just get, like, a wraith or something show up or that you didn't see and just delete your bed. That's like the other main scenario, I would say, that's a reset over then just like RNG. Like, basically, one of the uh, one of the main things about like running this game, especially running it for a couple of years now, because I've been running the game since it came out, obviously, which there's not really anyone still around from those days. 
Foggy. A div. Twitch login bot. <laughs> Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. You legend. Thanks for supporting the content. Keeping the dream alive, but I really appreciate that. You definitely defeat that Twitch login boss. Hell yeah. I'm really looking forward to the Ashlands. And it is going to be interesting. Like, I'm hoping, right, when the Ashlands comes out, that it, the whatever it is that you have to do in the Ashlands makes it interesting enough to just speed run getting and killing the boss in the Ashlands. Do you know what I mean? Um, we will, of course, still do all bosses' attempts. But I think it could be nice to do some like Ashland speedruns, like whatever you would call it, Ashlands percent or whatever. When it's new. But yeah, one of the biggest things about like running this game for a couple of years now since it came out, which I think I'm like the only person that's still running the game. Foggy, Xavius, give it the tier one sub to Pokimane. Foggy, you legend. Thanks for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive, bud. I hope you're doing good. That obviously means that Pokey must be a huge fan of this channel. I mean, why wouldn't she be? <laughs> Alright, we've got actually stuff that we needed. This is actually kind of big. You need more space, bro. Okay, what is this? You guys are going insane. Dr. Patrisco, thanks for the tier one sub, you legend, dude. Thank you for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive. I really appreciate that, bud. Um... Well, we don't have the extra leather. So we'll go for level three. Is there no more ball around? Is this even worth it now? All right, I'm going to do it. You guys, thanks so much for the subs, guys. You're legends. Thanks for supporting the content. It's a ward. Take those as well. All right. Thanks for the follow on Twitch. I appreciate that. DRXM. Can't start working until you acknowledge my request for games. Wait, really? Where did you request for that? I'll definitely play some games with you, bud. Hi, guys. This is the first time I see someone trying to speed up this game. Can you explain what it entails? Um, basically getting through the game by building as little things as possible. I did, I do have a few videos about it. I think if you do estimation explain in the chat, um, there's 
video explaining it in a lot of detail and then exploration faq as well answers a lot of like beginner friendly questions about the run oh no i overcrafted by making that unnecessary flint axe See one more ball. Yes, okay. Hi, I thought of you yesterday while enjoying the Sam Smith's winter welcome ale. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mark. Hope you're doing good, mate. Wait, I just heard another one. Is that one that I see across the ocean? Yes. Thanks a lot, like so. I appreciate that, bud. Hope you're doing good. All right, now let's go. Poggy, Mark, thank you so much for the very generous $50 super chat. You're legend, bud. Thanks so much for supporting the content and keeping the gym alive. That is very generous. Thanks so much for the 50 bucks, man. I hope you're doing good. I think I have another video as well. Is it exclamation strats maybe in this chat? That explains all of the speedrun strats. That's like super, super up to date video. But yeah, to briefly explain this speedrun category, in this category, we um, ha beat all bosses as fast as we can. Christmas pints. Christmas pints. That is 50 bucks is a lot of pints, mate. Do you want, are you trying to get me alcohol poisoning for Christmas? Jeez. Yeah, in this speedrun category, we're... Uh, Killing all bosses with a fresh character on a random seed and we're not allowed to like look up the seed and we're doing it with a glitchless rule set. Uh, you can see the rules on speedrun.com slash Valheim. Are you on a good run time? Yeah, right now we are. I mean, this boss is a little bit far away, so we're going to lose a little bit of time there. But I'd say overall it's a good pace because we have a lot of the items and mats that we uh, need. What's up, Atomic? Thanks for talking about the stream. Hope you're doing good. Merry Christmas.
You guys have been very generous already today. I'm crazy. So many subs and donuts. What's up, Star Scream? Can't stop him by, bud. Hope you're doing good. We've not been going that long, mate. Don't worry. Some Terra Nova. Thanks for stopping by. Man, we could use some good wind right now. Please, Orange Jesus. Save us. We need to see the new Orange Jesus emote in the chat, guys. We need to get those prayers in. Pray to Orange Jesus for good wind. He's going to start trying, but I think I need a nap. He's going to lurk. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and lurk, bud. Welcome. There we go. I can feel the uh, RNG coming in. Oh, I think the wind changed a bit, guys. It's working. What's up, Tetra? Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. You're legend. Thanks for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive. Yonik, I'm glad to catch you streaming again. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks, dude. Merry Christmas, man. Thanks so much for the 20 bucks. Hope you're doing good, bud. Merry Christmas, Nick and Valheim fans. Hope you're all get new battle axes from Santa. <laughs> Thanks, Odo. Merry Christmas, mate. Thanks for the sub on YouTube, Terra. Guys, keep praying to R and Jesus. We need a little bit more wind. I'm oh, gonna have to go this way as well into the wind, which is annoying. I do see a swamp over there. Which. Oh my god, what are you guys doing? Canary, thank you so much for the $50 super chat. You legend, thanks so much. For supporting the content and keeping the dream alive. That's very generous. Thank you. I hope you're doing good, bud. I think in the new year, guys, I'm going to plan another build event for the build server. To celebrate the new year. And I have a theme in mind. But... Um, We'll talk about it in the new year. Should be good. What's the dream? This, bro. Getting to do a living. Getting to Yo earn Nick, a living doing I'm this. I'm glad to catch you streaming again. Merry Christmas, bud. Thanks again, Petro. Appreciate that. I always end up thanking the YouTube people twice because the text-to-speech is really delayed. Yeah, the dream is me earning a living and getting to make content for you guys. and You've already made the dream a reality, so the dream is to keep it going now. <laughs> so that's why it's keeping the dream alive. Atomic, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. You're legend. Thanks for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive, bud. I hope you're doing good. You keep the dream alive for all of us. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Atomic. I hope so. I hope keeps the dream alive for some of you guys, at least. Mm. 
mana. Do I go for this right now? I'm trying to think, like, can I juggle these mats? I think I can. Right, let's go go for some Kaiten. You keep the dream alive for all of us. Thanks again, Atomic Legend. That's very nice of you to say, bud. Um, we could. Potentially go for an Abyssal Razor. Which will make the Mistlands easier. Because it is a pretty good weapon to just like start with for killing certain mobs. We relog it resets the Leviathan. What I'm praying to a god from the Acer be more appropriate? Thor, maybe? Well, when it comes to dealing with factors of RNG, there's no better deity than RNG Jesus. But we are polytheistic here on the channel. So we do also play to, pray to Odin on a regular basis as well. What? <laughs> I've not seen that before. This Leviathan is rowdy, man. Dude, relax. Clipping into Leviathan's new meta. I know, right? I kind of do want to experiment with that a little bit. The glitched runs, potentially. I wonder what can happen if you can get out of control with that clip, if you can go through the graphics or not. Amogus. Thanks for the sub on YouTube. I appreciate that, bud. What's up, piggies? And stopping by. Hope you're doing good. Just drop those for now. Wait, where's the boat? Ah, I didn't quite make it. Almost. Got some wind now. All right. Save that kite for later.
Shot is out happens to any dead spies. True. Okay, I see land here. It's going to turn and go to that a bit more directly. It looks a little closer. Looking down to avoid serpents is still a thing, yeah. What am I drinking? It's sugar free tango paradise punch. I have to drink sugar free and caffeine free for my health. Sometimes it's hard to find a nice soda that tastes good. That is both those things. And this one's pretty good. Yeah, true, guys. I see swamp trees there. This elder had better be on this island. Thanks, Marker. The run is going good so far. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much, Sergio. I really appreciate that. Always super positive. I hope you're doing good, man. If somehow what I do motivates you in any way, then that makes it all worth it. Love to hear that, bud. Okay, I'm probably going to relog just to remove that poison there, because we are in a bit of a sticky situation. And I'm probably going to chuck a fire down, I guess. Instantly just re-poisons me. He's dead now, so. I think we. Oh dear. How badly am I over encumbered here? <gasps> no! Well, that goes that run. <laughs> GG guys. New run I guess. I didn't see how close the one behind me was.
All right, we go again. Yep, it's Jova. Kind of might not have been worth it weight wise. Yeah, it was worth it. I'm not sure how I ended up over encumbered there. I think I just accidentally picked something else up. How's the very hard difficulty? Do you like it? What do you mean? Like the world modifier? Or do you mean just like the run in general? It's always just such an issue whenever you get mobbed on the coast of a new island. So no, nothing, uh, nothing else going on there in that scenario. The world mod. Um, I think it's good for a challenge. It's definitely something fun to mess around with. I do, I think really with the world modifiers, it, it really comes to life if you do, if you use in either the hardcore preset or just uh, customizing um, your casual survival playthrough for some quality of life improvements, like being able to teleport and stuff and you know um, maybe a buffing resource rates I think that's really where the world modifier stuff shines because just playing the normal world but cranking up the difficulty I think it's not that interesting or great on its own but I do think the hardcore world modifier is really good fun because I just don't like ways of making the game hard that's just as simple as just making every enemy a tank and do insane damage. I like the, the hardcore world uh, uh, preset because there's more to it. Do you know what I mean? So the hard world modifier... Or very hard or whatever. It's good because it enables that. But if you were just to do a world mod where all you do is make it hard. Like by turning up that combat difficulty slider. I think it would be a bit shit. I was listening for deer now. We just heard one, so. Foggy, Mike, thank you so much for the five pound super chat. You legend. Thanks for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive, bud. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing good. Let's go, bro. Good to see you. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good to see you as well, man. What? 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 what, what why is this deer so erratic? Trophy, please. Really? That's rigged. No trophy. I can't even see this guy. Ah, he's like that already. I 
I guess to make world modifiers more interesting, you don't necessarily have to stick with a preset. Good to see you and happy Xmas. Thanks again, Mike. You legend. Um, but I think it is it is fun to mess with more than one world modifier. You know what I mean? Makes it a bit more interesting. Quiet, I don't like that. Where are you at, dear? Kind of all run away. <laughs> Gotta say, no map isn't for me, but ready to play my hardcore account in, in Ashland's hype. So are you doing the hardcore? Or are you not doing it? Or are you just like doing the hardcore preset but turning off no map? Appreciate that, Mike. All right, so you're not you're not doing official hardcore. That makes sense. I mean, that's why I think the world modifiers are great because. I think what is, I think none of the individual settings are necessarily like amazing on their own. Although I think it is good for no map to be a toggle and for the the portal thing and the resources thing. Like those just needed to happen. But I think ultimately the reason why they're awesome is, is just that you can customize them however you want. I, I do think like survival games benefit so much from having that level of granularity, right? I think I. It's so common for anyone to play a survival game and customize things greatly to their liking. And that is ultimately a good thing. And Valheim really needed it. It's one of the best things they've ever done. Okay. A little bit of a scuff spot here. Trophy, please. Fuck, we're getting dog shit trophy RNG right now. I set a new game with two times resources. Had to turn it back. Too much resources, really. What's up, Claire? Merry Christmas. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. I've been thinking about doing some sort of playthrough where I just set up a world in preparation for Ashlands so that when Ashlands comes out, we just go straight into it on stream. Although I think we did it the best last, like with Mistlands, to be honest, where we just use commands to pot ourselves there and start working on the speedrun immediately. 
that was really fun and I think everybody enjoyed that. But there's something I've been thinking about. Is to sort of start a, a world where I just get set up for Ashlands. And um you know, we could, we could use world modifiers for that. You know what I mean? I do think if I were to do a playthrough before Ashlands comes out, on stream. I think I would buff resources and enable portal in anything. Um, you know, I'd still be willing, like, could still potentially turn up the difficulty and, and the death punishment and stuff like that, but I, I just think like I it, it, <laughs> I don't know there's not really much content in mine in a copper vein for eight hours over and over again. I made a two times resource well, but I made enemies two times stronger to balance it out. I like it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like a lot of the quality of life things, it makes sense to me that if you played the game over and over like a million times. I think it makes sense to just like both resources allow portal in anything and then yeah we, we could we could turn up the difficulty you know to keep it interesting i'd absolutely love a chill valheim stream of you just chilling out farming resources building shit we was doing that with, with my, the hardcore series and stuff but I think on a hardcore series, when I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do for Ashland's prep. Because obviously you play a lot more conservative when you do hardcore. Oh, we could try it. Like, a lot of people do say that they'd like to see me do, like, casual Valheim content. It's just I normally find that then I do it and I get, like, half my normal viewership. <laughs> oh, my God. This deer. We'll see. We might try it. Might just try it out for a stream or two at some point. See what people think. If we don't get another trophy soon, we might as well just reset. Because it's going to be just as fast to do all this again, but just get good RNG.
Okay, we got one. Speaking of algorithm, we need more likes. True. Make sure, guys, if you're watching YouTube, you smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the best way you can help me out for free because it makes it more likely for my content to show up in the recommended feed. And if you're watching on Twitch and you want to help me out completely for free, the best thing to do is still to go to the YouTube channel and smash the like button and subscribe. You can do that summation YouTube in the chat. Head over there, smash like, smash subscribe. Then you can just come back to watching the stream on Twitch. I, I don't mind where you watch. What? That is the way to have the highest impact for free on helping me out. Bit of a scuff spawn again. I think we only get bad deep day spawns. Oh, we didn't move. We might get one cycle. Not quite one cycle, but pretty close. There are no tool assisted speedruns in Valheim speedrunning because there are no speedrun tools for Valheim yet. I've discussed the creation of some but it's never really come to fruition Poggy is there us Or is that Lazarus? I can't tell. Thank you so much for the Prime. I appreciate that. It's just supporting the content and keeping the dream alive. I just lowercase. It's so hard to tell the difference between lowercase L and an I on Twitch. But thank you, Lazarus, for the Prime sub. You're legend. Thanks for supporting the content, bud. I hope you're doing good. Yeah, I think the thing with um, casual Valheim content versus me doing speedrun content is less so the algorithm and more so like just like um, trying to think how to really say this. Like I personally love direct feedback from you guys in the chat, right? Or in the Discord. Sometimes in the comments on YouTube, although those are kind of nuts now. It's extremely hard to uh, keep track of. But if you want to see something funny, I can bring up my YouTube comments on my phone. And, you know, I think someone yesterday said, oh, you just need to set aside a day to read them or something. <laughs> um... Right. It's like a d it's just not possible in a day. It's uh, not <laughs> it's just it it doesn't end. We're not. We're still just on like a couple of weeks ago. We won't get to the end. We won't get to the end. I mean, I can't. We don't even have the time to scroll to the bottom. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I like one of the main things. Um. That I like about streaming is your guys' direct feedback. What's up, Discord? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. Um, but 
But yeah, when it comes to stuff like um, me figuring out what people like, like we're just talking about. Um, maybe doing some some casual content. Um, it is useful for me to hear from my regulars about what they like. But usually regulars are so sweet they'll just say they'll they'll love to see me do anything. Um, and there is some use to that type of feedback, but ultimately the most useful feedback is just analytics when it comes to making decisions on what people like and what people want because the the number one reason for that is not that what people say isn't true it's just that there's always like 10 or 100 times more people that watch the content that don't take part in the chat or comment You know, like if a hundred thousand video people watch a video, like a thousand people might comment. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like the silent voters on the content are just like the majority always. So it's just like I just go on analytics when it comes to stuff like that. So like for that's why I said like we could try something with casual content and like see. How it goes. They're silent but deadly. That's what I'm trying to say. Well put. YouTube guru right there. Isn't that tough though? Figuring out what people like. Because the majority of viewers are quiet now. Uh, going, if you're going off analytics is pretty good. Yeah. I just do a mixture of like what I want to do. Not a mixture in terms of mixture of content, but when it comes to like what goes into my decision making, it's a combination of like what I feel like making. What I just like have a gut instinct for what I think would be good. Analytics on what I've already done. And, uh, you know, what, how my audience received things I've already done. I see you keep the grass. They changed the lowest graphic setting to include grass now. So we can't turn it off. I'm gonna have to Let's just make another one. Foggy Canary, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Legend, thanks for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive. Let's actually craft our picks just to save on weight a little bit. Ultimately, though, guys, when it comes to making content and choosing what what to do, you, you, you need your own vision. I mean, a, a lot of what I do is just like what what I what I want to do. If you know what I mean. But you definitely learn a lot from analytics.
But you do just need to kind of develop a gut instinct for it over time. Which can be hard, but once you've had some videos that have had some success, you can figure it out. I'm pretty confident about my intuition now. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to to uh, to watch the analytics on where people are dropping out or not to 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 figure out long videos do good. They're basically, the al the algorithm loves long videos because it's just more time on the website, more ad serving potential as well if you're doing mid rolls. But the alg algorithms love long form content for years now. Because they just want people on their site, ultimately. I feel like you start to adapt what you like into something that will be successful. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good way of putting it. That's definitely what I have done. Oh my god, we're going to die. We're not going for that. Stool. For the fine word, it's not worth dying for. What's the best weapon you've found to use on the plains boss? Silver sword. Silver Sword is the highest DPS on your cloth because he's weaker to silver than anything else because he's undead. Um, this is not hardcore, but it is a speed run, so. Death at this point would be sending us back to the middle, which would just be a reset. Too much. That's the same for pretty much every YouTube video, like so. It's pretty normal. No matter. Oh. I mean, 99% of the time, no matter what the content is. The majority of people only watch like the first five minutes. Because obviously it makes sense. So it's actually really interesting to me. I, I don't like talking too much inside baseball, so we'll get it off it after this because it does get very annoying because there's lots of people that are clueless that always like to chime in but um one thing that's always interesting to me as someone that's been doing this shit for years now and it took so long for me to finally figure it out and now i feel like i figured it out and it's going well it's always interesting for me to learn and hear about how people interpret um yes obviously longer vision longer videos will have a higher average retention <laughs> that's how averages work um it's always interesting to me um how people um interpret the data sometimes um people just don't know how to sort of extract meaning out of data you know what i mean like, one of the absolute funniest things that's super common on YouTube to me, right? 
that I don't do because of this reason is you know when people put in videos oh 80 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed make sure you subscribe guys looks like none of you guys are subscribed that's like one of the fucking funniest things to me because it's like yeah that's how it should be that means you're in the algorithm what do you mean that means you're reaching new people all the time <laughs> what if everyone that was your video was subscribed that means you're going nowhere <laughs> it means you're never reaching anybody right super funny do you think the silver sword overall is better than the frostner no i think frostner is a much better all-round weapon for general use because it's got a lot of utility to the knockback and the freeze effect but when it comes to objective dps it's better for it. the silver sword is better for your glow but I usually like to make both. Um, it's not usually worth stopping to rest because the time it takes to make a spot to rest and clear the area so you can rest and then the time it takes to do the rest. You have to end up running in a straight line Doing constant shift W with no interruptions without having to relog for like several minutes in order for you to benefit by seconds of time saved. And if you just simply don't have to go that far, it ends up costing more time. Like, look at this, like, we just reached the end of the land now, so we're jumping on the boat anyway. So it wouldn't have done anything, if that makes sense. We wouldn't have saved any time. So that's that's one of the main reasons why in a random seed run you, you don't rest as much. Because it's it's not predictable, right? The seed's not predictable. In the set seed, you can actually plot out where you would rest. We do rest sometimes though where on random seeds. Yeah, exactly, Xavius. I use these skip swords because I prefer spears, but Frostnet is almost. Yeah, Frostnet is just a great weapon. Very fun, very effective. Is the Akka decent or what? Not really. I mean, it. No all the weapons in Valheim are fun and can be effective. But the animation speed of most pole arms isn't really worth the stamina usage. So therefore, they sort of end up being low DPS. But obviously they do have some utility with like when you're surrounded by mobs and stuff like that. So. I typically recommend people to make like pretty much everything and just have fun with it but obviously when talking about certain scenarios I just answering questions from, from chat about like what's objectively best in a certain scenario you know what I mean I'll answer the objective version but in reality when you're on like just doing casual Valheim, I just recommend to use whatever you think is fun because it's not really a game that forces you to use meta stuff all the time. It is just a great game to have some casual fun with that will allow for a variety of playstyles and sort of the beauty of it.
most YouTubers in the Valheim world are very casual. What I'll say is, when you get to, when it comes to like weapons, right? You're talking about like actors in general. Um, if we're talking about end game stuff, like Mistlands, like gear or like metal stuff. It's going to be good. Whatever it is. Yeah, I usually only use pole arms to farm as well. <laughs> we never really cooked our meat before coming into the Black Forest, so... Knives are really good if you like builds that are high movement speed because they don't um, reduce your movement speed. So they can be very good for that. I, I always like to have a knife on my hotbar for that reason. So it can be fun just like running around quickly killing stuff. Pretty good for hunting as well with the lunge attack. A lot of time with stuff when it comes to like weapon types, really like, like at certain points in the game, you can play the game in, in, in many different ways, right? Some people like to specialize in basically one or two weapon types because they like to just level up that weapon type and really rely on their skill level. Um, however, in reality, at different points in the game, if you wanted to be like super meta about it, as you're doing your playthrough, they're all like certain weapons that provide the highest value at that given time in the playthrough. For example, finding and farming a Leviathan super early um, is actually crazy good, crazy effective because the Abyssal Razor, especially if you level it up to level two or three, which you can literally get to level two by making a level three workbench, which you can do just from match you can find in the meadows. So you can literally go from meadows and if you manage to go straight from Meadows to a Leviathan, get a level 2 Abyssal Razor. It is so OP for the early game. Like, it is a weapon that is usable even in some scenarios in the, in the plains and in the Mistlands. Um, it's so powerful for how early you can get it. So, the Abyssal Razor... Like, if you're in the, anywhere in the early game, um, it can be extremely worth making. 
you know, anywhere sort of pre-mountains, it's extremely worth. It's still kind of worth it a little bit after if you're wanting to use a knife. But if you wanted to be super like meta about it. Um, and then for example, it's like when you get to the swamp. Like the iron mace is pretty cheap. And, you know, bone mass is weak to blunt. All the skellies and blogs are weak to blunt. It's like so quickly attainable and so effective for so many mobs that you would want at that period of time. The iron mace becomes like huge, huge value at that point in a playthrough. And there's moments like that with every single biome, every single point in the game you progress where it's like certain certain things just provide much, much higher value relative to where you're at. But a lot of this stuff if you were to find it What in the late game, like let's say you just skipped all of these items and you're like in the mistlands and you just get the opportunity to make it now, it's like gonna be basically pointless. So it's, it's always hard to answer these kind of questions because it's, uh, you know, it's all, it's all relative to how people want to play the game. I tried the epic loot mod. I actually haven't. Seems cool though. Okay, boom. We've got the bones that we need. What's up, Chris? Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, mate. Yeah, usually the way I play the game, maybe it's just because I'm like, I've got speedrunner brain. I just go for those value items as I progress of what, what is the highest value at each point. And then I just throw in a couple of things that's just like personal preference, like knives. That's because I don't really care about stats and skills. I, I've, you know... Stats and skills are essentially something that if you focus on, you can sort of game the system a little bit. Definitely makes things a little easier. But as someone that doesn't really die very much at plays when I play Valheim casually, I haven't really like I, I I've just found that I like naturally end up with decent skill level anyway, if you know what I mean. It doesn't really I don't care about specializing in one skill line, if that makes sense. I've had a lot of random deer that just been chilling. Hey man, I want to beat the game, but I get really bored and I keep quitting really early. Is there any tips you can give me to try to have fun in this game? Um, I mean, if you don't like the game, you don't like the game. No one can force you to, to like it. Maybe it's just not for you. So I say that first of all. If you can get a refund, get one. <laughs> you don't feel pressured to like it. Um, 
what is it that you're getting bored with exactly? Because if it's the sort of gr grindiness of certain areas, it could just be that you need to just stick it out and wait. Slow progression is still pretty vague, bro. Is there like a specific area, a specific activity that you're finding to be slow? Well, what do, what feels slow about it? Because there is a bunch of stuff that is just skippable, you know. So like, you, there could be just something that it, you find it boring that maybe you just don't even need to do it, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to help, you know? I'm trying to think about what it, what it is because I would, you know, the Black Forest is definitely like one of the shittier zones in terms of how much of a grind bronze is. But really, you don't really need to make much bronze stuff at all. I hate going to the swamp area because I keep getting killed. So it's dying, it's dying a lot basically is the issue. Um, well, what I would recommend then is watching my swamp guide video. I have a video, is, does it link to it if you exclamation swamp in the chat? I don't, I don't remember if it does guys. I don't know if anyone remembers. But on my YouTube channel, I have a guide that's called like Valheim Beginner's Guide to the Swamp, I think it's called. And in that video, I show like a bunch of like lesser known tips and tricks and ways to get. Oh no, that links to my swamp only challenge video. That's the wrong video. On my YouTube channel, anyway. If you do exploration YouTube, you can you can find it. Um. In that video, I recommend like a bunch of stuff that will make your life in the swamp a lot, lot easier. And if you do that, you'll die a lot less and you'll know sort of like what, what to go for to make it. It's still, it is still a great video. It's one of my favorite videos that made that swamp only video. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I would say. And I, I would guess I would just like top that off with like, if you're struggling with the swamp, try and prioritize making poison resistance potions, getting that root helmet so you can increase your poison resistance even more. Make stamina potions, make tasty meads, make lots of health potions. Like potions make your life a lot easier in this game. Thanks for the sub on YouTube, Benjamin. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing good. And then, yeah. Just, you know, blobs are weak to blunt. Root chest is also great if you find that you're dying to archers, yeah. Good point. At any point of the game, really, if you die... If two of your main problems in Valheim are like dying to archers or dying to dead skeetos, the root chest piece is an absolute savior for the high PS resistance. You will literally instantly be able to tank things. 
I absolutely love the root chest piece. Which is why it sort of became one of the only pieces of armor people make in the speedrun. <laughs> we still haven't found a single ancient seed. Thanks for the sub on YouTube. Chris, I appreciate that. Hope you're doing good, bud. This run has been a little bit scuffed so far. Oh, nice, Benjamin. I appreciate that. I'll definitely be making a bunch more guides in the new year. Obviously, there'll be a ton that slash lands related. And I will be continuing my guide series that I've been doing per biome. Because there is still a bunch of weird little quirky tips and tricks for this game. That you know become essential for the speed run and challenge runs that are not out there really in videos. My channel definitely is full of tips that aren't anywhere else in the in guide form at least. And I I'm happy about that and I plan to continue that trend. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're raiding you afterwards. Yeah, the Hilda stuff is cool. Wow. You don't see that every day. This brute got deleted. Find leather in here. Well, we did, but not not much. Don't just about to say I don't hear an ancient seed, but actually I do now. Need leather for level 3 workbench so we can level up the wooden club into be a level 3 club, which is the fastest high damage blunt weapon to make in the game. That we use for well, mask because he's weak to one. I'm just gonna craft another one. Oh, I didn't have the stamina to dodge. This is going to be the last stream of the year for me, by the way, guys. I'm going to take a few days off for Christmas. I'll be back sometime mid to late next week. 
get back on the video and stream grind. What's up, Master Sword? Thanks for coming on the stream. Hope you're doing good, bud. Another troll cave there. We could check that again. And conserve stamina a little bit. What kind of challenge runs are I doing? All kinds of stuff. I, I try and prioritize doing challenges that no one's ever done before. Um, the, the, the video I'm working on now, which we already streamed doing the actual gameplay for the challenge, but I'm still working on the video. It's a Miss Land's only challenge. It's a world that's modded to be only Miss Lands. And we try and kill the boss starting with nothing in a world that's just Miss Lands. We did the, I think the one previous to that, we did the same thing with the swamp. Beating the game in reverse. There's another one that we did. Got the ve the vegan challenge, where we didn't eat meat or use any leather, which means we just we couldn't even do a boat. Now, all these challenges are stuff that had never been done before when I did it, and most of them no one has even attempted since. It does not include all bosses, it's not possible. So it's just to kill the queen. Present wrapping is done. Nice. I'm so glad it's so normal the stores that us offer a great gift wrap option nowadays because I'm so bad at wrapping presents it's so annoying <laughs> this feels like bliss every time I shop online and click the gift wrap, gift wrap, op gift wrap option can't talk So good for ancient seeds. Enjoy wrapping gifts. <laughs> I mean, I can uh, I can see that. I'm just bad at it, <laughs> so I end up with some sus-looking gifts for people.
sometimes doing something menial like that though is kind of like weirdly relaxing, right? Teach your minds off stuff. Thanks for the sub on YouTube, Jordan. I appreciate that, mate. Flint Axe anyway. Need an ancient seed. We don't see a hard spawn. We might have to kill a root and just hope for the best. That's not looking good. because I don't hear it. Last year, my wife was so pissed I used all wrapping paper she bought trying to wrap one gift, mock it up and try it, try it again over and over. <laughs> I've caused anguish with the exact same level of competency of gift wrapping myself, so I can relate to that. That is a dead seed. It's just not enough ancient seeds in our first black forest. Or in the one with their elder in it. <laughs> Nothing we can do about that. GG. Hopefully this next one's a God seed. It's got to pray to our own Jesus. Pray to Odin. I don't know how many more of these attempts have got in me tonight. Yeah, we can only 
because a, a, a world records like nine hours, right? So six now, so seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. So 3 a.m. probably just about manage. But if this run goes another hour and it's a reset, we won't probably won't have time for more runs after that. Certainly not the one after that. So either this attempt or the next one's probably the last one. We'll see though. It depends. Alright. Trailer chambers below us. That's pretty good. Basically, in the direction of the clear stone, we saw a mountain. That could be big. Oops, I hit the mic stand. Oh, I'm knocking stuff over. Put that in the bin before I knock it over. Okay. Let's see. See where this mountain is. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't even look good, actually. It really annoys me on YouTube that this fucking heart thing to react with covers my chat. Like the bottom right of my chat. So there's always one word I can't read in people's sentences. Finished watching the Swamp Guide video on day 130 and still stuck on it. You watched my swamp guide video and you're still stuck on the swamp? Is that what you're saying?
Yeah, it's annoying this heart thing blocking the bottom, right? I wish I could turn it off. Lazarus on Twitch says, I mean, with will what modifiers we have now, it's impossible to be stuck. Just tweak a bit, give yourself an edge. That's true. That's good advice, I think, as well. It's always an option. Ah, understood, Doodle. Well, I hope it helps. It should do, mate. Thanks for watching the video, and uh, yeah, good luck. Improved watching your speedruns and videos. Nice. I'm glad. Appreciate that, Neil. Also, noticing how many people in the chat now have the purple sub badge, the YouTube membership badge. Just like a year, I think. Pretty crazy. Appreciate that, you guys. We got slide glitched. Thanks so much for the prime sub on Twitch, Curly. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing good, bud. Thanks for supporting the content and keeping the dream alive. Oh my god, we got the slide glitch again. So unlucky. Just super unlucky.
kind of scuffed with the constant side glitching and stuff, but we still got a really good time there. Thanks for the look, Wilbur. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing good. Hope Odin paves the way to your success. Thank you. Likewise. Can't mess with world settings on official speedruns. So yeah, standard. Yep, those are the types of runs we normally do, Robert. I think it was before Hearth and Home the last time they New Game Plus. any mods if you play them for fun I personally this is like maybe one of the simplest mods ever but one of my favorites the first person mod there's a couple of first person mods that work the exact same so any is fine that allow you to play the game in first person it actually looks awesome in first person I really like it. Uh, the Build Anywhere mod. Another really simple one that's really good. So that being able to build anywhere means you can actually build little bases inside dungeons and stuff like that. Which is very cool. There is a bunch of like, I like that kind of stuff where it's almost like vanilla lights, if you know what I mean. But it's not messing with the game too much, but there's all, there are like a bunch of more involved ones that people like. Valheim Plus is obviously the big one that just has like a bunch of quality of life things. Um, that kind of stuff, plus tweaking world modifiers a bit is like what I would is like some of the best stuff but obviously there's the epic loot mod people like there's the raft mod people like how do you feel about removing restrictions from portals i think it's fine i mean obviously like lots of survival games provide lots of options for players to be able to customize how things work and 
play it how they like, and I think it's important Valheim allows that. And I and you know the way I feel about ha you know having to sail with metals and stuff is, I think on your first playthrough, you know, it's definitely worth it to just stick to the normal Valheim preset that is how the developers originally intended you to play the game because I do think it's it can be a really good part of the experience being forced to traverse with all of that ore. But honestly, once you've played the game a decent amount, it just becomes tedious. And I, th and, and, and I think like, if you're gonna continue to play the game, you should be able to play it however you like. And, and I think like for a lot of people that have played through the game a shitload, they're probably not super excited about having to cart like all of your metals all over the place um so I, I really like that it's an option but i feel like it should always remain an option as opposed to just uh you know permanently removing it one way or another I think it's worth keeping on on your first playthrough. It is, it becomes part of your overall strategy of the playthrough, you know. Because it kind of determines how you build your, like where you build your base and stuff like that. You know, it makes like you, you, you kind of want to build and the coast somewhere so you can have a little dock to pull in and unload and stuff like that oh my god this is the most stacked boar stone I've ever seen Like fuel eternal and farm grid, yeah, those are good ones. I, I, those are the type of things that I like. I do also feel like using a seed viewer as well to reveal to to, to like look things up is another one of those things that like I think a lot of players that have played the game a ton <laughs> will just like kind of become over the need to uh, sail around blindly looking for things right I think it's fine to look things up I, do, I still think, like I said, everyone's first playthrough should be like totally blind using the default world mods. The reason why boars appear to spawn a short distance from raspberry bushes is because raspberry bushes have a tendency to spawn on the edges of forests or patches of forest and mo a lot of things in the game have tendencies to spawn on the edges of things so it's common to find 
There were stones on the edge too. After 250 hours of gameplay, I started using a seed viewer, not sailing oars and stuff, but as you said, I experienced the 100% van vanilla way. Yeah, that's great. 250 hours without doing that is a lot. I think I did about 150. Wait, maybe a bit more, but yeah, similar for me as well. Guess we just venture inland then. I'll do some cooking first. Still need more wood to be honest. Thank you for the raid. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing good. Welcome Raiders. Hope everyone is doing good and enjoy the stream. I think actually gonna do a little bit more cooking. We're French speedrunners. I think most of us don't speak English. We're pretty famous, so I appreciate that. I don't know about that, but I appreciate that. Thanks for the, thanks for the raid. Hope your runs are going good. my thoughts on Mistlands. I think Mistlands is really good. I think it was a super, super ambitious update. It was absolutely packed with content and stuff. Um... I think the dungeons are like one of the highlights. I, my only, and I love the dwarves and all of that. Like I think Mistlands is basically amazing. One of the best parts of the game, if not the best part of the game. Um, definitely the most interesting part of the game. Absolutely love the whole having to make craft the seal breaker thing. Feels much more like a quest than anything. The w one of the only things that I, I don't like about the Mistlands is that I do feel like the AI can be a bit weird on Seekers and the and the whole Queen fight. The AI can be a little weird, but I'm not. But you know. Obviously, I love Valheim, but um, 
the AI in general is something that I don't like about the game. Like, if you were to ask it for me to name like one thing I don't like, I think the enemy AI is a bit silly. But like pretty much every mob just like is programmed to just attack and then run around in a circle. <laughs> Which I think it, it would be nice if it was a little better than that. <laughs> But on the whole, I love the Mistlands. Yeah, Queen AI is weird, right? and the great ones chase the end of the world yeah I mean I think where the AI is is okay um the queen is just the name of what of the of the boss in the missiles um and yeah, I, I, I get, I do think that, you know, uh, improving the AI uh, probably, you know, shouldn't be their priority. Like it's, they're doing the right thing by focusing on content first. But I do hope that eventually the game gets to, the, to a place where Iron Gate make the game you know like content complete and then just go back and improve some things like ai Super weird. What forest RNG today? Foggy Austin, thank you so much for the five dollar super chat, you legend. Thanks for supporting the content, and keeping the dream alive, bud. I hope you're doing good. But look, Nick, Merry Christmas! If you celebrate season's greens, thank you. Merry Christmas. thing is going to be.
L. Nick. Happy Christmas if you celebrate season's greetings. Thanks again, Austin. Appreciate that, bud. Still, really? Oh, it's pretty close. Has always ruined everything. See how close this actually ends up being because depending on how much sailing we have to do, it could be kind of scuffed. Remove that poison because it's pretty low health.
probably could go for level 2 flint axe. Kind of makes sense with this amount of resources. Honor the wind. Oh my god, are you kidding me, game? such a troll R and Jesus why have you forsaken us Lost him finally. This is a glitch for speedrun, bud. There is a speedrun category that makes you use weapons for bosses. But that's not glitchless, because that's not a glitch to use fire. It's called Hardcore Percent or something like that. It's on the category extensions page, but it's not very popular. The reason for stuff like that, the reason stuff like that's not popular, right, is because that's not a speed run, really, right? It, I mean, it is because it sort of came up with a rule set and speedrunners agreed to create that category. And I was obviously a part of that conversation because I'm a moderator on the leaderboards and was one of a very small number of people involved in that at the time when that category was created. But really, you know, all the, at a certain point, you know, creating all these restrictions on what can and can't be used in a run, you just wind up that you're just playing the game normally. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, obviously can still be playing the game normally quickly but obviously I think most people would agree the general spirit of speedrun is speedrunning is like doing things as fast as possible at almost any cost you know what I mean This is the more pure feeling category. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think in the future, it might even become, this might even evolve into something. But basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm always interested in mostly just running 
whatever category feels like the most speed runny <laughs> speed run category if that makes sense the most sort of speed run purist category because i feel like those are always the most competitive and most fun to watch and do right now it's this but i think eventually the run we, we might be able to you know crazier exploits and glitches might be found that allow us to do glitchier things to skip like huge portions of the game in the future perhaps i would be interested in seeing that especially in a bosses run when when the you know because let's think they think about it like this One Ashland's got like the right now re world record is nine hours. I think if it was more competitive and, and and more people had the time to grind it out, I think it could get down to seven. But when Ashland's comes out, let's say the record is ten hours, and that's pretty optimal. If there was any way using speedrun strats, you could turn that 10 hour run into a five hour run. I would be all for it. Es especially if you were still killing all bosses. Because I think that would be ultimately better content to be seeing runners get to kill all the bosses more regularly um the flip the other thing that i sort of can imagine is you know eventually valheim will have an ending um they, they have said that it will and let's say when you do the ending there's a credit roll if there were, if there was an exploit that allowed you to skip a bunch of stuff to just go straight to sort of whatever it is that causes the credit roll to happen then that would be a any percent category and that and i would totally be up for running that as well because obviously a huge part of the sort of traditional speed run categories in, in 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 all games is like ultimately it's how fast you could beat the game and technically that's just like when it ends. Can't wait for unsegmented all bosses credit will run in a few years. Plus any percent credits. Yeah, yeah. Same. That is ultimately what I want. I want it to be feasible for every runner that grinds the lead that has ever ground grinded the leaderboards. To be able to do unsegmented not just feasible but it used to be mandatory to be unsegmented and i want that to be the case again but obviously it can't be the case if it's an irrational amount of time so yeah i want all bosses to be always viable in one sitting and uh i also want that to be in any percent category I think we could maybe do some crafting before we go. If none of those things happen, we're probably just going to figure out like which singular boss or group of boss bosses make for the most fun speed run in one sitting and then just do segmented from time to time
This run is okay, providing that once we get to the elder, the fight goes well. We do use corpse run periodically throughout the run, but if the fight goes well, we'll only use one on the setup for this boss. Unless we die. Yeah, obviously we know that Seiko. I used to run that category. I had record in it multiple times. But my only problem with with doing the like runs where you're doing the first five bosses is like the the run that I would do all the time is like we're only looking at content that came out years ago. So it's just not it for me. It's a good category though. I am going to try and figure out if it's possible to do all the bosses in reverse again. Um, after Ashlands is out. That is something I'm going to try and do. Definitely going to try that on the list. Did you learn anything from the reverse boss run that helps with the main category? Uh, no. Everything that I do, every challenge run I've ever done, is like multiple times easier than any speed run. Like the reverse challenge was it was easy for me. And it's because of the knowledge that I gained from the speed run. So it's the other way around. The only reason 
I even started doing Valheim challenges is because I knew that I had so much knowledge of the game that was sort of not known what like largely like more more widely let's say because of doing the speed run that like we we would on stream discuss like things that were hypothetically possible like doing the game in reverse and people would try and say that it wasn't possible which made me think that that probably means that it's a good idea for a video because people think that it's not doable. So the speed runs are what inspire the challenge videos. Speed speed running this game with normal world modifiers. fast enough to get a world record is way harder than anything that you could ever do even with world modifiers that's the reality lots of people don't believe that of course but that's because most people don't know anything about the run Yeah, a, a huge percentage of uh, world records have bosses out of order. Nice, Bilbo. One thing um, that has always been a constant throughout my sort of uh, career, let's say, as a Valheim speedrunner, is that there's there's always been that type of chatter that thinks that this is easy and that they know better to the extent that I will even challenge them to do it themselves and they actually do actually end up getting into trying the speedruns because of it and then basically come back and say like holy shit this is taking forever that's always been a thing I will say I get less people like being kind of like dicks in the chat the more popular the channel gets because I think um, we're just going to tank these with Corp Trump because they're one stars it's going to be a waste of time or any, any other way um, yeah I guess like when you have less viewers and less subs and stuff people kind of just are so much more inclined to be nasty, I have found. Um, so it doesn't happen as much nowadays, but it used to happen all the time. Wait, are they really all gone? Nice AI for a change. And we got slide glitched immediately. Nice game.
If under 5k it was worse. Man. I'll tell you, man. I, I remember the days of me having zero viewers when I started streaming years ago. And only back then. Uh, bearing in mind, this is like probably at the lowest point of my life when I got into streaming. Super, super mentally unwell. And physically unwell. Redundant, you know, was made redundant. And I literally would have people come into my stream and just be like, you fat fucking R word. You are so pointless. Like, why are you doing this? Give up. Literally had people say those exact words. More than once, probably. I mean, I'm never not the sort of person where that those kind of things that would really get to me. But it really says something about these kids on the internet. That if you have like no viewers, they think you're a no one. And if you have viewers, they think you're like a god. <laughs> pathetic lots of people need to figure out another way to do a value judgment on things on other than just internet clout <laughs> but I have it's been years since anyone ever spoke to me like that in the, in the chat The more viewers and the bigger my community grows. That was a really good elder fight, by the way. But yeah, the more viewers I get and the more my community grows, guys, the, the more people are, are nice to me, I find. I assumed it would get worse. But it didn't. It got a lot easier. Having said that, I do read less comments than ever. So people could be being super unhinged in the comments for all I know. But a live chat, at least. There's a cave there. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that, Seiko. One of the other super funny things as well is... Um, I used to always get people saying to me like... Oh, you're way too relaxed. It, like, it's so boring. Like You should have more energy. Act more excited. Have more energy. You know. The, you know. Try to be funnier or more energetic or this or that. And then. When people actually started watching my content. That one of the number one things. That people used to tell me they like is like. Oh I love that. It's so relaxed. I love that. You're keeping you cool in all of these situations, you know, or whatever. People just like, it actually is what people like about the content is that it's chill. So it's a lesson in that too. Don't fucking listen to people. I don't know what they're talking about. And never change who you are just to try and get viewers on the internet that's insane <laughs> oh 
Like I am just a chill guy. Like this is what I'm like. I don't like really like high energy people really. I don't really enjoy that vibe. I'm not gonna act some other kind of way on camera. I think I'm going to kind of YOLO. With all this gear. Oh, hang on. We don't... Don't have heat there. Well, that's okay. I don't speed run, but I love to watch your runs because you are chilled. And to pick up some tips on playthrough. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think the supportive community tends to track nicer. Even as it grows. Jerks move on when they find themselves alone. True, yeah. Birds of a feather thing, right? Oh god, my mon other monitor's disconnected. Um, thanks, Robo. I appreciate that, mate. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, this is huge. That is why we check caves. Could we teleport and start this again? Let me think about this. Well, we need that key though. Now nah, we need the key. World record is nine hours. We could potentially uh, kill ourselves and reset our spawn to go back to the middle to save a lot of time on that traversal. But we need to use the key. You know what? If we continue to progress in this direction for other bosses... We could do modder uh, last or at least after we've done bone mass. And then we wouldn't be losing any progress. And we would actually save that travel time. So let's just keep looking for other bosses. Because the best way to, to, to backtrack would be to reset our spawn and kill our character. We don't necessarily need any of this for modder. We can do modder with just campfires. God, but one leather short. By the way, 
what I'm talking about is only possible because I dropped an antler at spawn. Because the one thing that is essential is a pickaxe. All we need to, to kill modder is a pickaxe and campfires. It's the minimum we can do it with. There's faster ways to do it hypothetically, but that's the minimum you need. And we dropped one of the three antlers at spawn for that very reason. Just in case this scenario happened. Fine wood, bro. And we got our extra leather out of that barrel too. Nice. The run's picking up quite a bit. By the way, guys, we're up to the, the three hour point of the stream now. This is normally where we remind people of the ways that you can support the content. Because it is the support from our community that allows me to continue to put all the time and effort into making content for videos and streams for you guys. So the number one best way you can support the content financially is on Patreon at patreon.com slash nickrawcliffe. Patreon allows you to do a monthly donation, sort of like a Twitch sub. I say you can do it for any amount of money, even as little as $1. And how it works is, for example, if you were to subscribe at the $1 level right now, you would be donating $1 to me right now. And then you'll be donating $1 a month in the first of every month from then onwards until you cancel your subscription and you can cancel it at any time. Anyone that becomes a patron also gets invited to join my private Valheim server that I pay for, that runs 24-7. You get to play on there whenever you want with the rest of the community. And you also get invited to play Valheim with me live on stream when we do server streams. There is a link in the description to the Patreon or you can do exclamation Patreon in the chat for the link and it's always the pinned message at the top of chat. The second best way you can support the content financially is by doing donations. Donations are the best way to do a one-off contribution because your money goes the furthest. Everyone takes the sort of smallest cut when you do it that way. And last but not least, you can support the content by either becoming a YouTube member over on YouTube or by doing a Twitch sub. Um, Mem YouTube members also get access to random exclusive behind the scenes content on YouTube. I'll do the occasional stream or video just for members of me just doing stuff off stream. Um, and obviously you get a bunch of emotes and stuff for Twitch chat and that. Um, also don't forget to join the Discord. It's the number one best way to make sure you don't miss any live streams or videos. There's a link in the description for that. Or you can do exclamation Discord in the chat. And I do stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So if you're watching on Twitch and you'd rather be watching on YouTube or you're watching on YouTube and you'd rather be watching on Twitch, you can find the link for the channel in the description or do exclamation Twitch or exclamation YouTube in the chat. And regardless of which platform you prefer to watch on. The number one best way you can help me out completely for free is by smashing the like button on the YouTube stream and subscribing to the YouTube channel because those two things make it more likely for my content to show up in the recommended feed. So even if you're watching on YouTube, the best way you can help me for free is to do exclamation YouTube. Head over to the YouTube channel smash like smash subscribe and then if you want to go back to watch on twitch 
You of course can. Helping for free, so I'm, I'm broke as hell. Hey, that free help is one of the best ways you're gonna help me out, bud. So I appreciate it. I'd much rather all of the free help that boosts me in the algorithm boost my content in the algo so I get more of my money from Google instead of you guys having to part with your hard-earned cash. That's the great thing about being a YouTuber is that most of my income, Google is footing the bill. <laughs> the donations are amazing. They help a lot, of course. But, uh... Helping me out for free does also help financially. Thank you guys, thank you for the likes and stuff. Oh, look, a one star. Twitch viewer, nice. Welcome to the dark side. I want some core wood for later. How did you miss, Droll? You're the worst lumberjack ever. Come on, bro. Help a brother out. You're hitting everything but the tree I'm looking to get chopped up, bro. Or, out of that tree we got four. another tower there. Let's get another piece of fine wood out of the front of that. Thank you for the look, Lupo. I appreciate that. You're doing good, mate. Guess we're just waiting for this troll again. So that one piece of tin, we can use that later. This is potentially a really good thing that this island is taking us so far. It just could turn into a very bad thing if it doesn't lead us anywhere useful. <laughs> well, managing to get to the late game biomes with barely having to use the boat is definitely good. Mm -hmm. 
it's not really worth like super going out of your way to do this at this point but this deer is sort of in our tracks already so we'll take the extra meat Still could use a couple more cores. I guess we'll go for this. Wow. Oh God. blocked away I think we're kind of close though aren't we See how long it takes to get there. Could be okay. I don't know. It's probably too far. We're now at 16 minutes. Yeah, fire still is, and it goes. It's just annoying that there's an archer there. But they're all stacked up like that because eventually juggle them around to get around them, but. too early to call it I mean if we reset now we definitely don't have time for another attempt so maybe see how the recovery goes if the recovery goes well we get our stuff back quickly We'll see where the timer is at and play it out because this should only waste a few minutes we shouldn't ultimately be that consequential but it just depends how well the recovery goes if it's bad we die again and we just call it a night
Well, yeah, this bit's scuffed, isn't it? Forgot about this area. Oh god. I just have to go. Why is it gonna die? We get stoned to death. I'm gonna relog to remove that wet debuff just to allow us to get away from these grey dwarfs faster. What's up, Bruno? Thank you. Glad you like the stream, bud. It's nice of you to say. Thanks for stopping by. There is a mountain there on the left. Have tacos for lunch? Anyone want one? Yes, please. I love tacos. Mexican food is like one of my all-time favorite cuisines. Tacos for lunch sounds epic. You'll box one over. Hell yeah. minutes something we just lost there so it's all going to be about whether or not this body recovery goes good as to whether or not this run's worth playing out oh my god what I zoomed too far in then, I couldn't see. Oh god. Well, <laughs> I didn't have enough stamina left after jumping in to... dodge the arrow <laughs> they, they look like there was, there's at least two archers in that cave if not three because there's one at the entrance and two all right guys that's a gg it's not worth eating another five minutes um but anyway thanks a lot for watching the stream make sure that you smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel, even if you're watching on Twitch, exclamation YouTube. Um, thank you so much for all of the Twitch subs, the YouTube memberships, the super chats, the bitties. You guys have been very generous. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Make sure you join the Discord. To make sure you don't miss any live streams or videos. This is officially my last piece of content for the year. So, I hope you guys. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 
or enjoy whatever holiday it is you celebrate. If you don't celebrate those things, uh, it's been a pleasure making content for you guys in 2023. 2023 basically became the year my dreams came true. I've been able to earn albeit a very modest living at this stage but nonetheless some sort of a living making content so thank you so much for all of your support and i am excited for 2024 i've got so much content to bring you when i come back i'm going to be trying to get the miss Lance only challenge video out and of course we're going to be focusing on the ashlands content as soon as that comes out and i'm also really excited to be jumping on uh, enshrouded. We're going to be attempting to make some enshrouded content. People seem to enjoy the enshrouded content I did when the demo was out. Um, if that game takes off and people like it and it's also the game I want it to be, we may make it a regular thing on the channel. If the game ultimately doesn't work out and it's not what we're expecting, then, you know, maybe not. We'll be giving that a shot, though, in 2024. And many more videos, challenges... Valheim related content to come. So thank you so much. Have a great Christmas and a great new year. Thank you so much for the support. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. <laughs> Follow the Twitch channel, join the Discord, do all the things. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in 2024. Night, guys. Have a good one. Bye.